Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight to the Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode 3 of my Colorado Rockies Out of the Park Baseball series here with OOTP16. And today we are ready to get into the offseason, uh, after the 2015 season. I don't know what you would call that, the 2016 offseason, I guess. But uh, anyway, so we finish up the season 74-88. and 88. Uh, We were around 500 at the trade deadline last time I checked in with you guys. Um, we really fell apart in September, which is actually a good thing because I was kind of, you know, I was okay with going 500. Like, you know, I do care about draft position, but it's not really as important in baseball. Like it's very common to get, you know, really top talent, middle of the first round, late first round. So I wasn't too worried about it, but, uh, we were really aided by this awful September we had. Um, yeah, we had this long losing streak here. It started with this three game set in Seattle. We lost three more to LA. We lost, uh, three more to San Diego. And then the first two to Pittsburgh. So that's 11 in a row. We were hovering right around 500 this whole time. And then we lose 11 in a row, uh, went some more games. Then we lose like four in a row here at the end of the season and, uh, end up 14 games under 500, which I think is going to give us probably a top 10 pick if not a top five pick. Let's see how many teams are worse than us. Um, so there's the Orioles. That's one, two. Uh, well, we're tied with a couple of those teams, three. So we might actually end up with the top five pick here if we're lucky. So, uh, yeah, it looks like four teams in the NL were worse than us and two teams in the AL. But these four of these, you know, I, I don't know what the tiebreaker is for these, but uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. And another good news, Nolan Arenado won the NL batting title. He had 7.9 wins above replacement. He might even win MVP this year. He led the NL in uh, batting war, as you can see right here. And uh, there's the you know batting average through th through 332 to lead the league, so that was really encouraging. And we actually had pretty good performances from a lot of our uh, hitters this year, and uh, including guys that we added midseason like Lonnie Chisnall. As you can see, he ended up with a 791 OPS after we picked him up from Cleveland, and he's starting to learn to play first base pretty nicely, which is good to see. Um, Kyle Parker played really well. He won Rookie of the Month in August, I believe, and finished with a pretty solid. Uh, big league stem with us so he's gonna start the year with the big league club next year that's for sure and uh anyway just going on down see how other players did Searsay did not do too well actually he was pretty horrible he had negative war partially because he was playing shortstop but um jose miguel fernandez had a really good year he had a four win season and only 100 games so he's probably going to be our second baseman for the future or at least for next year that's for sure other than that, uh, Joey Gallo played really well for us down the stretch. Oh, he cooled off in September, too. Him and Parker both cooled off in September, but, um, you know, he was playing a lot better for us than he was playing for Texas, which was good. He, had, he actually had that war up to 1.4 at the end of August, so it came down a little bit in September. Corey Dickerson ended up having a really good year, uh, despite being hurt for part of it. So, we had some pretty encouraging performances. Uh, on the pitching side of things, though, not so much. Eddie Butler struggled, which is not something we are excited to see. Um... Chad Bettis didn't really look too good, neither did Lyles or Matt Zek. And uh, we also had, I believe Jonathan Gray is in AAA right now. No, it looks like he's actually still in double A. I tried to put him up in AAA at one point, but they sent him down, it looks like. Yeah, so he's likely to be up in the big league club next year, it looks like. He's almost ready, but, uh, you know, our head scout really doesn't like him. And I was going to fire our head scout, but I actually took a look at his ratings, and he is actually uh, pretty good. So you can see here, Bill Schmidt. Yeah, he has an uh, outstanding reputation, and uh, you can see he's got pretty good ratings there. So we're actually going to hold on to him. Should have had more faith in him at the uh, deadline or at the uh, uh, MLB draft because look at this—he can really scout amateurs. But anyway, hopefully it will work out. Um, so all right, let's get into off-season matters. So Nick Cundley has a team option. I believe it is for three million dollars. Yeah, three point one five. Uh, so he was pretty good in a backup role for us last year. I think I will hold on to him. Yeah, why not? I don't think we're going to really be needing the money. Well, actually, it kind of depends. Okay, so we have tons of money to spend. We can actually get him on a cheaper deal if we wanted to. I'd like to do this like a one year and do another maybe team option. But he was pretty effective for us. Yeah, all right, so we'll do that. So we actually can get him for even cheaper. We're just going to avoid his last year then. All right, and Jorge De La Rosa, we're going to avoid the last year of his contract because he was pretty horrible for us this year and wanted he was going to make $13 million or something like that. So he will become a free agent. Um, all right, and then, yeah, this is new to this year's game. We have off-season goals and stuff, or uh, season goals. And um, this stuff is important when, uh, I guess, you're starting out because you don't have that much job security or anything like that. So uh, I didn't even look at these last year. 
But uh, it looks like he was satisfied with our performance I set up for you, and he feels similarly about the. Okay, so you've, we're in pretty good standing with him right now. He wants us to play close to 500 ball, acquire a nationally popular player, increase attendance, bring more of your drafted players to the team, and keep building your team up in order to reach the playoffs in the next five seasons. All right, so we'll see about that. I'm not going to worry about that too, too much, but... Um, all right, so it looks like some pretty good managers got fired. Buck Showalter and Mike Sosha, and Theo Epstein got uh, canned as well. He would be maybe nice to bring in as an assistant GM. Um, I don't think we have any need for team staff, but... Certainly, we could uh, replace, you know, one or two. And there's also some really good, yeah, there's some really good uh, potential scouts out. So, we could probably try and bring one of these. Yeah, I say we bring Theo in as an assistant GM if we can. Yeah, it's occupied. He would sign it, though. So, Jeff Bridgick right now is our assistant GM. Okay, we do need a pitching coach. But, yeah, let's get Theo on board. And then, uh, if needed, he could take over as head scout. So, someone told me to do this in the last episode, but... Um, if a good way to have a backup head scout if your head scout ever leaves or retires or anything is to have an assistant GM who can uh, also be a good scout because there, uh, quite often um, there aren't this many good scouts available or anything like that. So uh, it's pretty important to have one available if your guy leaves. So Theo can hopefully do that. And then we also need a pitching coach. Um, let's go with... Uh, well... We have a lot of ground ball pitchers, and ground ball pitchers are really effective in this game, so we might go with somebody who can work with ground ball pitchers. Uh, I'd rather go with someone a little bit younger, but that's all right. It looks like I don't really have... It's kind of thin pickings at this point, so get that guy. Oh, how about this guy? He's only 50. All right, cool. So he's got some room to grow, too. A good thing to look at with coaches is age, because they do have room to grow if, you, uh, if they are young enough. Um, I remember in previous saves, like... Uh, you know, so I would hire coaches who maybe started out with like average ratings and they were young. And then, you know, if they, the, you know, if they were the pitching coach and I just, even they, you know, maybe weren't even that good, but I had a bunch of good pitchers on the team and we pitched really well and, you know, we're the best uh, runs against team in baseball, then they could even improve to, you know, like outstanding or legendary or anything like that. So it is pretty, uh, pretty easy to uh, find good coaches, I would say. But um, all right. So let's also, or first let's delete all our messages. Let's look at salary arbitration. So we do have uh, some pretty solid plays going to arbitration. Not, no all in Arenado yet, although I do want to lock him up on an extension when I get the chance. We're not going to worry about Rafael Bedencourt. We'll let him go. Um, so as for everyone else, Charlie Blackman will bring back. And one thing that's important to do in this game is to uh, not let guys go to arbitration. You want to offer them contract extensions first because you can often get them for cheaper than what their arbitration estimates would have been. Um... Or what they would have gotten in arbitration is what I meant to say. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Bernardino, we'll non-tender him. We don't really need Roger Bernardino. So Lonnie Chisnall makes 2-8. He has two more years before he hits free agency. I'm not sure what kind of extension he would look for, but I think because he is still sort of an unproven player, we're just going to go with the year-by-year -year thing with him. So we'll give him 2.75. Will and Rosario we're going to bring back as well. So him and Chisnall will probably continue to platoon next year. Let's see if we can get him at 3. Nope. We'll give him 3-2 then. There we go. Uh, Michael McHenry was our backup catcher this year. He wasn't really any good. Although he was really good the year before. Jesus. Hmm. All right. Well, then we'll bring... Oh, man, his ratings are really bad. Yeah, I guess we'll let him go. We can sign a better catcher than Michael McHenry. Uh, Adam Otsavino, he had a pretty good year for us. 3.03 ERA. So we'll bring him back one year or $1.5 million contract extension. Rex Brothers spent most of the year in the minors for us. He's pretty bad this year. Uh, so I think we'll non-tender him. Uh, his ratings aren't actually that horrible. He's got some, he's got good, like, you know, you always want to look for relievers with good stuff and then maybe one or two really good pitches. And, you know, if their movement or control is a little low, that's going to affect it. But I'd rather look for the other stuff first. So I guess we'll bring him back. It's only 1.5 million. And, oh, whoops, actually, we'll give him 1.6. And we do have a lot of money coming off the books and such so John Axford he had a 3.8 ERA could bring him back he'll be a free agent in the year anyway so certainly not a long term commitment 7.5 alright and Jordan Lyles we definitely want to bring back still have hope that he can turn into a half decent starter although it's kind of looking bleak at this point but uh, anyway we got him for the Dexter Fowler trade that the Rockies did a couple years ago so Definitely want to keep him around, see if he can turn into anything. 
Actually, it looks like his fit might have been half decent this year if he had three wins above replacements. Yeah, it was 3.93, so first year he had a FIP under four. So, you know, there's hope. There's certainly hope. But, uh, all right, so um, we don't really have any big trades to make or anything like that, so I'm probably just going to uh, skip ahead. If we win any of the uh, off-season awards or whatever, I'll cut back in, but I'll probably skip ahead to a round for agency at this point. So we will be back. All right, so we're back in this award season. And uh, we did win one award already. Gold Glove, third baseman, goes to Nolan Arenado. And please tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I'm pretty sure it's Arenado, but I could see it being something else. So, yeah, please tell me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. But I'm really excited about this guy. Uh, he is going to be a beast for the long haul. I don't think he's really ever going to hit, like, 330 again. I'm sure his BABIP was off the charts, but, um, yeah, hit a 355 BABIP. So that's probably not sustainable, but... You know, gold glove defense at third base combined with, you know, even what he did in 2014 would be really, really nice to have. So pretty excited about him. I definitely want to lock him up to an extension once he hits arbitration. And uh, also Theo Epstein did sign. So he is our new assistant GM. We got our other guy fired. <laughs> but um, anyway, some people are probably going to wonder, like, why, you know, I go after Theo Epstein as an assistant GM, but not after a new manager like Mike Sosha. Who got fired? Um, oh yeah, it looks like we got Mac Jenkins, our new pitching coach. And uh, the reason for being that, uh, oh, also it looks like we won. Boom, Silver Slugger, Nolan Arenado, nice. So he gets the, uh, I don't know, that's got to be some sort of thing. Like when you win Silver Slugger and Gold Glove, it's got to be some sort of like a, I don't know, funny thing. I don't even know what I'm saying. But uh, Jose Miguel Fernandez finishes third in Rookie of the Year voting. So back to what I was saying. Um, about why I don't want to, oh wow, two of the three Blue Jays there, but um, or two of the three top three in Rookie of the Year voting were Blue Jays, but uh, oh yeah, and also I should say the uh, White Sox did win the World Series, they only won 87 games, but I think that was like the best record in the AL, like the AL was pretty horrible, um, let's see, standings, oh no, okay, so they actually, there were a couple of 91 teams in the AL, but uh, yeah, they won the Wild, or they won the whole World Series over the Reds, so that's pretty surprising, those are two of the worst teams in baseball in real life. And another one really bad team, the Red Sox, made the ALCS. Oh, look at that, Matt Barnes. Huh. All right, well, uh, anyway, so back to what I was saying. So I don't want to hire a good manager quite yet because I'm still not really in the stage of, like, uh, trying to win now or anything or, you know, make the playoffs. We're not quite at that point yet. So when we do get to that point, I will go out and look for a good manager and try to make that. Like the Cubs did with Joe Madden this year, they uh, sort of hit the point where, like, they're starting to – you know, or they, they've, they've reached the point where they're, you know, sort of done rebuilding and they want to start winning and they want to try and contend for a playoff spot. So they go out and hire, you know, maybe the best manager in baseball and Joe Madden. So anyway, um, all right, let's keep simulating here up until uh, the free agency period starts. That should come in about a week or so, I think. So we just got a couple more days to simulate. Um, just double check salary arbitration. All right. So these are the only guys that did not. Yes, yeah, so we've got everyone else under contract extensions. All right. And that is good. And then we will. Uh, look here in just a moment. Where are you? Free agency filings. There you are. All right. So we'll take a look at uh, who are the top free agents this year. Also, uh, one thing that I always like to look at is the international free agency market. This can be a really uh, good good way of acquiring good players for cheap contracts um, because the guys who come overseas to play, uh, they can be five-star players, but they will not demand five-star money, if you know what I mean. So you can often get them on pretty nice contracts, and they don't always work out, but quite often you can get pretty good players out of this pool. But it looks like there isn't really anyone this year. So some, there are years where five-star players will come over, uh, but it looks like this is the only half-decent player this year, although he is a pretty solid reliever. He's only 26 years old, and he's only looking for 850000 so I'll we'll offer him a contract, and we can do that. Hopefully get him to add to our bullpen next year. Other than that, let's go back to the offseason center. See who the top free agents are this year. See if there's anyone that we want to think about going after. Now, uh, the thing is, because we are still a rebuilding team, uh, I don't want to give up my draft pick. But I think because we're going to have a top five draft or a top ten draft pick, actually, we wouldn't have to give up uh, a first rounder. We would have to give up our second rounder, which could make going after a big name free agent a little bit more uh, plausible. But at the same time, you know, a lot of the problem or a big problem is, you know, if we go after a big name free agent like David Price, say he'd be 30 years old. By the time you really start contending for a World Series, like, he's probably going to be, you know, at least 33, 34 years old, like, at, you know, best case scenario, and, you know, worst case is, like, 35, 36, or, I, just, I shouldn't say worst case, but more realistically, he's, like, 35, 36, so it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense, but 
Um, we could go after like a buy low guy, like a Yohan Cespedes, who's only asking for six million dollars because he had a really bad year with Detroit last year. Um, but we also have a lot of good young outfielders. Uh, and, you know, Joey Gallo is probably going to be out playing right field again. We have Kyle Parker in left, so wouldn't really make sense to go after Cespedes. Um, Jonathan Papelbon, Sean Marshall. I mean, we could get like a reliever. You know, this guy's definitely Marshall. Definitely isn't going to have a yeah. He doesn't have a qualifying offer, so we could get a guy like Marshall. To add to our bullpen, he is not demanding much. And if we get lucky enough, you know, he could uh, have a good enough year that we could get a qualifying offer for him next year that hopefully he would turn down and that we can get a comp pick for. But, uh, all right, so we'll try to sign Sean Marshall. And let's go back. Wade Davis, I imagine, has... Oh, no, he has no compensation, interestingly enough. He actually got traded to St. Louis in this. So we could go after Wade Davis then, too. Oh, he's not interested in joining an organization. Shocker. Not too surprised. I wonder if that... I've never actually seen that before. I wonder if that's like a Colorado thing, or maybe he just doesn't want to join us because we are a rebuilding team. Matt Latos is 27. He's comp offer, so we'd have to give up a first-round pick for him. Don't want to do that. Let's go back. Yeah, so I, I don't really see us signing anyone here. Um, let's keep going down, though. Ooh, Hawk Julie's only 25. He must have gotten non-tendered by... He must have just gotten released or whatever. But yeah, we'll definitely pick him up. So Lee was a former top prospect for the Rays. And he looks like he's a pretty good defensive player. Our head scout likes him a lot. So sure, we'll try to sign him. One year, 800000 Originally from South Korea. Yeah, pretty smart. Good guy in the clubhouse. Can play really any infield position. Or he can't play any infield position, but he has good defensive ratings that I feel like we could he could develop into a, into a guy who could play any infield position. So... All right, uh, other than that, I don't think we're really going to go after anyone here. Um, yeah, there isn't really a whole lot. I mean, so we – oh, sorry about that. We definitely want to leave roster spots for our young players. Like, okay, we should try and get another catcher, I think. But, uh, you know, we'll probably – like maybe someone to play center field. But now we have Dickerson. I wish one of these guys could play center field. I guess Dickerson and Parker are just going to platoon next year, but – be nice if one of those guys could play center. Um, and I guess we could use pitching, but we're going to have Jonathan Gray in the rotation next year. We want to leave these three in, plus probably Friedrich Rebettis. So, yeah, we don't really need another starter. So I would just say uh, we'll just try to find another catcher, and that'll probably be our only uh, other move in free agency that we haven't made already. And hopefully we'll get those two relievers we went after, Marshall and the uh, Cuban guy. All right, so let's look at catchers. All right, so, ooh, Christian Vasquez is a free agent. What happened here? He must have also gotten released. But, all right, we'll definitely try and get Christian Vasquez. Oh, he's not interested in joining the organization. Really? Come on. This guy's a beast. Dang it. Um, all right, AJ Jimenez, Tucker Barnhart. You guys are also pretty young. I guess we'll go after Jimenez since he's got some potential. Although he probably won't reach it. He's already 25 years old, but. Anyway, all right, so we'll bring him in. Dang, I really wanted Christian Vasquez. In, uh, in another, uh, when I, in that big Red Sox thing. Oh, by the way, I meant to mention this. So a lot of people have been clamoring to see this big Red Sox save I've been working on, which is all the way up until 2086. So if you guys want to see a video of me sort of showcasing um, the history and, you know, some of the players who made in the Hall of Fame in that save and, um, you know, some of the players who, like, some of the jersey numbers I've retired and all that stuff and, Sort of just see uh, what this game looks like in 2086. Let me know. I, I could make a video on that. I just, uh, you know, I don't want to do it if no one really is interested. So uh, just let me know. Dang it, Christian. All right. So uh, we made some contract offers. I'm going to cut out here, and uh, I'll get back to you guys when we get responses from... Uh... Oh, actually, we have the Rule 5 draft, so we'll do this first. Um, so first got to look at the Rule 5 draft pool. Oh, i got to memorize... Uh what our minor league teams are. So we have Albuquerque, New Britain, Modesto, and Asheville to check. All right. Albuquerque, New Britain, Modesto, and Asheville. Okay, so we want to sort by team and just make sure that we have guys, uh, we have everyone who we need on the 40-man, like Christian Adams. We don't want him getting picked in the Rule 5 draft, so we'll add him. We'll also add Ryan Castile. And then um, who else? Who else? Who else? New, or... Uh, Crap, I have to go back now. Albuquerque, New Britain. 
I thought New Britain used to be the uh, Minnesota team. Um, I guess that changed, but Modesto and Asheville. All right, New Britain, Modesto, Asheville. So right, I think we already passed Asheville. Yeah, there's no one there. Um, New Britain and Modesto. All right, New Britain, anyone? Doesn't look like it. And you want to check the OOTP scouting as well just to make sure, but yeah, there's no one there. And Modesto. That would be M. Looks like there's no one. Yeah, there's no one. All right, so we won't lose anyone in the Rule 5, hopefully. Let's continue draft. And we'll have a pretty high pick in the Rule 5 draft, so hopefully we can get someone half-decent. Uh, usually this is good for picking up relievers. It's, uh, you know, it can be, you can find good players in here sometimes. Like, there's been a couple occurrences where I've found good players, but uh, sometimes, like, you you can get good pitching prospects or whatever that are left in here, and you can just pick up and stash on your roster for a year. But quite often it uh, doesn't really result in anything too well. We could get Johnny Venters. He's got a torn UCL right now. It's not pitching since 2012, but he's still got a pretty high rating. He really looks like the only player really worth picking here. We could get Corey Vaughn as well. It looks like he could be half decent. But I think, uh, I don't really think we need another outfielder. Hernan Perez. All right, so let's get Johnny Venters. He can really fortify our bullpen. And then if Corey Vaughn's there next round, I might grab him. But if not, then I'll just, okay, he is there. So we'll grab him. We are going to have David Dahl to play center this year. Oh, nice. Corey Vaughn looks like he's a pretty good guy. All right. And, uh, yeah, so David Dahl's probably going to play center next year. I will uh, keep him down for the first, you know, two weeks of the season or whatever to uh, prevent him from occurring a year of service. But, yeah, he's probably going to play center field for us next year. And then we'll have Parker. And I guess we'll have Vaughn as our fifth outfielder. He can play right. Yeah, he's, uh, he's like a coach on the field, so that's good. He's good in the clubhouse. All right, so cool. And then I'm going to cut out here and get back to you guys when we uh, get responses from the guys we offered contracts to. All right, so we got all those guys to sign contracts. Sean Marshall signed, as well as these three, Hector Garcia, Hak, Julie, and AJ Jimenez. So we will go to players DFA. As you can see, these guys actually signed five days earlier, but we will add them to our active roster. I don't think we have 40 minutes space for all of them, but we can make room because we have plenty of guys on this 40-man roster who we can afford to wave in DFA, like Jorge Rondon, and we will add Sean Marshall. All right, cool, and then uh, at this point, we don't really have any other, uh, you know, glaring moves to make. Ooh, Urias is a, I wonder if he's going to start next year in AAA. I'll eh, we'll probably start in AA. Um, yeah, we don't have any other really big moves to make, and let's see, oh, yeah, here's David Dahl. So yeah, he's just about ready to come up and play center field for us. Um, I'll definitely start him in AAA next year, but, you know, he had a pretty good year in AAA. He had a full season, so, uh, and he was, yeah, he was really good, so he should be ready to go pretty soon, but, uh, all right, so that is that. I'm going to skip ahead, uh, I'll, if, or I'll, I'll show you guys a little trick, um, like a little tip or whatever to do at one point in this off season, something to do that can help you guys, uh, you know, get good players or whatever, you know overall goal of the game is to, you know, build a winning team or whatever, so I'll, I'll give you guys uh, one little tip, something to do in the offseason, but uh, man, there's been some big trades so far some big moves, so Austin Meadows gets traded for Jacob DeGrom, that's pretty big and apparently Austin Meadows was on Seattle, so he must have see, he got traded along with Tyler Glass now for James Paxton, what? oh my goodness, that is a absolute steal for Seattle and then they use wow, and then they get DeGrom too, Jesus so Seattle's making some big moves, but um, well, it looks like Cody Allen got shipped to the Red Sox. I know the Dodgers traded for uh, or I know the Dodgers signed Upton. I think the Yankees got Zobrist. Um, what else? What other deals have happened? Cespedes goes to the White Sox. Brewers signed Cueto. So yeah, some pretty big moves here. But alright, I'm gonna cut up. So we are here at February 5th, 2016, where the preseason begins, and this is the key marker for the little trick I'm going to show you guys, but uh, first we have a couple news tidbits I want to get to, so Johnny Venter suffers a setback, so he's going to be out another three months, that's not a really good sign, but uh, still, at least his career's not over, that can happen sometimes with guys who have Tommy John. Um, other than that, uh, Hall of Fame voting results, so Ken Griffey Jr. gets in, um, this is, I believe, new to this year's game, I don't think, I don't, yeah, I'm pretty sure last year's game didn't do this, but uh yeah, players do get elected to the Hall of Fame each year, and uh, no, or, uh, no Clemens, no Bonds, no Tim Raines. 
Just Ken Griffey this year. No Piazza either, actually. He'll get in, though. He's got high enough uh, percentage. And uh, I can manually vote for the uh, Hall of Fame if I wanted to, and it will uh, give me some sway. Like, if I had voted for Piazza, he would have gotten in. If I had voted for Bagwell, he probably would have gotten, like, I don't know, 70% of the vote instead of 58.5, and I could have influenced his way in there eventually. But I just let the game play that stuff out. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so pretty cool stuff there. And... Um, all right, so preseason. So when the preseason begins, a lot of free agents who still haven't signed, their contract demands will lower. So um, this happens a lot when you get a top-tier free agent who's demanding like $30 million a year, $40 million a year, something ridiculous. And uh, eventually he will – no one will sign him because no one's going to pay him $40 million a year or whatever. And then um, once you get to the preseason, his demand will come all the way down to like $12 million. And you can get you know top players in the league for really cheap – now, this year it didn't really work out. Uh, Justin Morneau, Trevor Cahill. I mean, we could bring Morneau back, but we already have, you know, we already brought in Chesnall, so there's no point in doing that. Trevor Cahill, he's actually coming off for a pretty solid year with Atlanta, but, you know, we have young arms we'd rather give spots to. Jeff Samarja, actually, he's coming off a really bad year with Chicago, just like in real life, but uh, Howie Kendrick. So, you know, you can get good free agents on cheaper contracts here if you wait, but, um, you know, quite often. Uh, it really doesn't, uh, nothing really comes to fruition. So, uh, this is a good, so, you know, this is good to look for, like, and I'm sure we'll be, you know, signing guys at this point later on in the series, but there isn't really anything, uh, here that, uh, you know, I can make for a good example, but, uh, anyway, still Christian Vasquez doesn't want to play for us. Oh, now he would play for us. All right. So let's, let's get him then Christian Vasquez one year, 2 million. All right. I definitely want to bring him in if I can. I remember, uh, actually, I already said that. Never mind. All right. Um, so anyway, yeah, he's only 25. Tim Collins is available also. He's only 26. He's out for another eight weeks. But yeah, so couldn't really use it effectively this time, but there are two spots when guys' contract demands will lower. Right after the winter meetings, they won't lower too much then, but you can sometimes get them for better prices than otherwise. Um, and then right when the preseason begins, always check for agency when the preseason begins, because sometimes... Guys will slip through the cracks, and then they will be demanding, you know, ten million dollars a year for a five-star player or something like that, and it can really, uh, really reap the benefits of that kind of thing. So, all right. Other than that, we're gonna simulate uh, probably till the end of spring training, where we can get ready for the next season. All right. So we are back on opening day, and we are ready to get things started. So first, let's take a look at the top 100 prospects. See if we have any. Brady Aiken is number four. Hunter Parsons number five. So that's two of our draft picks. That's good to see. So, at the very least, they hold value, which is good. Um, so, they can always be flipped in trades if they, uh, you know, if we think they're not going to work out. But, I don't know, hopefully they work out because we spent pretty high draft capital on them. And, of course, number one is Brendan Rodgers, the guy we did not get the chance to draft who I probably would have if I could have. But, anyway, he is, he pretty much always turns into a beast in this game. Corey Seager's number three, guy we almost uh, traded for last year. Couldn't quite get him out of the Dodgers. But uh, anyway, Dansby Swanson is number six. Look at that. Number one overall draft pick in real life. He went 20th in this. I should have I, I should have thought about taking him, but anyway, I probably would have gone with Aiken over him anyway. Matuela, he's another pick. And Manuel Margot from the Red Sox. Cool. All right, so we did make a couple of, uh, or I guess we have a couple, uh, you know, roster tidbits. So Nick Hundley got hurt, so he's on the DL right now. I'm probably going to look to either DFA or trade him once uh, he does get healthy, just because we did get Christian Vasquez to sign. Um, and he's probably going to be our everyday catcher this year because we're going to try and let him develop. And then we have AJ Jimenez, so I'd rather keep as a backup over Nick Hunley anyway. So, well, either DFA, we'll either release Hunley or uh, trade him. It's not really a big deal if we release him. It's only $1.5 million. So, uh, also, Keone Kayla got hurt. He's out for the next three months, torn triceps, which is unfortunate. And Johnny Venters is still out for another five weeks. So, anyway, uh... Other than that, roster is pretty, uh, pretty similar to what it was last year. We had Hak Ju Lee up as the backup infielder. Take a look at AAA and see which guys might make roster impacts this year. So David Dahl is going to come up. Tom J. Murphy might come up at some point, especially if we don't get any production out of our catching spot. He'll probably get a chance. Um, we'll probably also see Christian Dames at some point this year because he's hankering to get up and show what he can do in the big leagues. So we'll probably see him at some point. I don't know about Russell Herrera. He's definitely behind a name, Sir Adams, on the uh, depth chart. Also, we have all this pitching, but... Anyway, um, other than that, so we can take a look at the full top prospect list. 
and see how many Colorado guys there are. So we got Jeremiah Burks, David Dahl as our only hitters in the top 100. Burks was another draft pick, I do believe. He was a third-round draft pick. All right. And, uh, yeah, not many of these guys are head scouts-like, but that's all right. Uh, and then as for pitching, this is where we have quite a few. Julio Urias is number 13. Tyler J is number 18. Tristan Beck, Grant Holmes, and Brady Akins. These are all guys we've added in the last, uh, you know, calendar month. So that's good to see. And hopefully these guys pan out. I'm, I'm kind of concerned that our head scout doesn't like any of these guys. But anyway, we'll see. So, all right, that is pretty much that. Um, let's take a look at the preseason predictions. We are projected to win... And there's 70, uh, 78 games, so that is not too bad. I would probably take that. I definitely projected to be an offensive team, score 800 runs. I think that'd probably be top, at least top 10, um, if not top 5. Let's see, is Arenado... Oh, Corey Dickerson made the top 10 hitters. Oh, and so did Arenado. Cool. And uh, Juan Miguel Fernandez, or Jose Miguel Fernandez. I can't remember his name. So those are some pretty good projections for our offense, uh, but our pitching is definitely going to suffer. And James Paxton is projected to be a top 10 pitcher, so I can see why Pittsburgh gave up a good haul for him. But uh, anyway. All right, so let's. Uh, that's pretty much going to do it, I guess. We don't have really much else to cover. Um, yeah, if I trade Nick Hundley, I will let you guys know in the next episode, but it probably won't be for anything too much, so I wouldn't get too concerned over it. I think when we, I tried to trade him in the offseason, the only offers I got for him were Yasmani Tom, Tom, Thomas and Eris Buena Al Eru Buena, the, the, the Dodgers uh, international shortstop, both of which they only wanted to give us because they are one-star players locked up on long-term contracts, so wasn't going to have any of that. But all right, um, and we can take a look. I guess I can show you guys the lineup. So, yeah, it's pretty much the same lineup as last year, except we got Vasquez in there. We're still doing Chisholm Hall, Rosario platoons, and uh, Dickerson Parker platoons. And then we also have this pitching rotation. But, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same rotation as we had last year. But one thing I did forget to do, actually, is we did claim a couple guys off waivers. There's always a – I would always say check waivers at the end of spring training because there are always going to be guys on waivers who you could pick up for nothing. And they could actually turn into something half-decent. Uh, not he's just Montero. But uh, we did pick up a couple guys who were have been, uh, or I don't know, I thought were worth picking up, I should say. Jacob Turner and Chris Carter. So Carter we're going to put on the active roster, and we're going to actually send Rosario down. Because I was looking at Rosario's uh, stats and numbers and stuff, and I don't really think he has much of a future with us anyway. So even though Carter's a bit older, I'd still rather uh, see what he can do in that first base platoon role. So we'll send Rosario down. And we also got... All right, guys, so this is where the live commentary got cut out. I don't know what happened, but uh, this is just where the file stops or whatever. I don't really know why, but we just lost the last minute and a half of live commentary for this. But nothing really too important happened. So the other guy I added through uh, waivers or whatever was Jacob Turner. So we're going to send Christian Friedrich down. We're actually going to have to wave and DFA him uh, to get him off of the 25 minutes so we can put Turner in his spot. And that is pretty much that. That is the only other thing I had to get to in this video that uh, got cut out there, so... Anyway, that is pretty much going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy this episode of OOTP. The next one will be the 2016 midseason update. That will hopefully be up tomorrow. If not, then it will be up on Wednesday. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. And those out. Peace.